Hello, everyone. I'm Asha Nayaswamy, and I'm here talking with my friend Vasudha. Vasudha lives in Delhi, and when I was in Delhi last year, I had the pleasure of her company at our center there where I stayed for several weeks. But this will be my first opportunity also to learn more about her life, get to know her a little better. Hello, Vasudha. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice to be with you. Vasudha, tell us a little bit about what your upbringing was like. What, what were your interests and your thoughts as a child? Who you were before you found Master? So um, I think when I was young, I was far removed from the spiritual path. Mm -hmm. I, uh, being brought up in India, we had a lot of devotion and devotional practices at home. But uh, I think uh, with our education or me particularly, I think I was more of a skeptic always. So a little bit of devotion, yes, with the family. And, uh, but I used to not at all uh, be enamored by the spiritual path or anything. I used to think this is unproven and uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me at all. So I think this went on for quite a few years of my life. I got married also, and I had absolutely no interest at that time. Sure. I'm going to step up just a second. Were you, um, did your skepticism make you unhappy, or was it not really an issue one way or another? At that time, it didn't really matter because uh, it wasn't in my horizon. I mean, I wasn't looking at it. Uh -huh. uh, I was an introverted person. Uh -huh. And uh, I used to think too much and everything, but I never thought there was a way out for that. So I used to have my, you know, periods of not being very happy, sometimes being negative. But it wasn't in my zone that anybody or anything could really help me. So maybe that in a way, skepticism did pull me down, but I wasn't really aware of it because it didn't allow me to explore more. Were you saying... But, were you in scientifically oriented? Did you, were you in Yes, I was, I was more intellectual maybe. I wouldn't say I was a very learned or this, uh, you know, person, but very intellectual in the sense I would love to study and I would love to, you know, I would mug up history books and books on astronomy and geography. I was very study oriented and very, um, I think, brain oriented. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow that probably... Uh, was my solace, I guess, because I guess we do need something to get away from our negativity. But somehow spirituality was never in my horizon. So I never thought skepticism was a problem. I thought it was actually a good thing <laughs> till I came on the spiritual path. And I realized, and I read Swamiji saying something about constructive and destructive skepticism and doubt. And I realized how much that had pulled me down. But at that time, no, I was pretty uh, fine with my doubts and skepticism. What part of India? Then, oh, sorry. sorry. What part of India did you grow up in? Um, I was always in Delhi. Always in Delhi. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually from Uttar Pradesh, which is just uh, on the border of Delhi. Uh -huh. But uh, my family shifted before my birth, a few uh -huh. years before my birth. So I was more like uh, Delhi, a little bit Uttar Pradesh also, because we had a family house there. Yeah. You, um, did you go to university? Yes, I did, in Delhi itself. And what did you study when you were in school? In school, I did uh, the regular, but in 11th, I did commerce. Uh -huh. Commerce. Uh, which was business oriented. Uh -huh. But in college, I took the arts. Ah. And then I did my master's in business administration again. Let's see. So did you have a career or did you marry soon out of college or both? I, uh, yeah, after, right after my master's, I got married. Uh -huh. But then after some time, I did go into the finance field for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were also wanting to tell me. So then, so in, in during all this time, spirituality did not play a part in your life at all. So, so you were just settled and happy and watching your life unfold the way you expected it to. Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't say I was strictly very happy, but I just didn't know a better way. <laughs> so what happened? So uh, not like unhappy as in, but I think I was always so much of a thinker 
so there was always a little bit of element of negativity sometimes you know mm -hmm. and um, melancholy also and a uh, little bit uh, i was a uh, lot in my mind mm -hmm. and uh, with relationships also i would be stuck with things you know a little bit but this i realize more now than i did at that time <laughs> 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 so that was happening and if uh, somebody says you know how's life I'm, it's great i'm really happy and you know i had absolutely no you know a nice family and uh, you know everything seemed to be health everything was fine so nothing really you know to uh, really regret or anything but now i realize that there was a lot of uh, being in the mind at that time but then again there was nothing better that i could think of at that time <laughs> <laughs> so did you have how did how did it shift then what what awoke you to a spiritual solution yeah that's very interesting because um, i used to go to a gym earlier uh -huh. and uh, there was a trainer there who was uh, like a spiritual counselor also uh -huh. in her spare time and she would invite us over tea and samosas after our gym you know we would sit around with my friends from it was close to my colony the you know the place where i lived uh -huh. so all my friends were also going to that gym and we started talking about past lives together uh -huh. and then it became oh you know somebody got really helped with their uh, looking at their past lives uh -huh. so a couple of us we said you know this is interesting let's go and see our past life and i was like really there's something like that and anyway so it started with that i we went into a course with past life regression and hypnotherapy course and i sort of entered it that way because i think it seemed like a semi science you know more like a study than really reading the scriptures and wanting to believe something so when i came at it that way and i discovered there's something else beyond what i was actually used to thinking i think i got deeper into it and various things like then alternative uh, therapies like reiki you have, and you have to slow down for just a moment so yeah. did they did you just find out who you used to be is that what you were you able to like intuit past incarnations from this training uh yes we did see a few past lives but not too many uh -huh. a few of them as i said um, i was very skeptical and uh, great doubter so you know it wasn't easy for me to go into even my past life so it's very easy to do that through that um, guided meditations and whatever visualizations that we learned but it wasn't so much that uh, past lives were there but you know not too much of that uh -huh. then we got introduced to reiki and uh, different then you know there's like spiritual shopping all over uh -huh. there were so many workshops and classes and then i met a very wise teacher very very i was very fortunate to meet one like that uh -huh. and we learned how to go into you know our belief systems and self analysis but really this was went on for almost 10 years till i found uh, yeah eight ten years till i found kriya so, eight years so so we go from a, a, an intelligent highly educated skeptical woman with a, a regular life then through your gym you actually <laughs> you, the door opens and so then there's almost a decade of just exploring options outside of the world you'd been in before was it was when it was, was any of this tumultuous or was it just interesting and something that you did it was just very very interesting so uh -huh. i still didn't have total belief but it was really interesting and i just went along with it uh -huh. i wouldn't be too much with the energy and everything but somehow uh, you know we just went along because it was just very logical uh -huh. and certain things were logical that part i kept feeling energy sensing energy was a little less uh -huh. and uh, but i really enjoyed that because it gave me insight about myself uh -huh. but uh, it was true that till i found kriya i couldn't that uh, i kept exploring different things uh -huh. but with, when i found kriya maybe it was 7 8 years down seven the line years. how did you how did you find kriya <laughs> so i was meditating for 2 years before uh -huh. i joined ananda and then i thought you know there was a i was getting some joy out of the meditation practice it was an amalgamation of everything that i 
learned you know uh -huh. buddhism and all sorts of things and all combined together a practice uh -huh. and it was quite satisfying uh -huh. but there was something where i was stuck you know and i felt that there is something more and strangely enough to me it came devotion you know uh -huh. i saw a book or something it just devotion came to me because i was trying to do something very buddhist which didn't think i didn't think was very devotional maybe it was maybe my this thing uh, my perspective but it didn't seem very devotional and um, i got stuck in my meditation practice and the intuitive guidance which came was it said you know i need devotion and then i was like you know i need some scientific technique now to learn meditation properly and it just happened in a party a friend of mine who was a devotee of yogananand ji he told me about ananda in delhi kannar school where we had classes at that time uh -huh. and he said they are having meditation classes why don't you go there so i said yeah i was looking for something like that on yogananand ji yes i think i've read autobiography i autobiography before and that looks like you know a traditional practice of uh, meditation that's what i want a proper technique and that's how i came to ananda <laughs> so and and when you first when you first arrived and you first had a class who was your first teacher was it daya and keshav yeah, yeah and keshav yeah. did you have any feeling when you walked in how important this was going to be or did it grow on you slowly it took a really long time <laughs> because i was always like this was a sunday and it was sunday was always a very precious family time Uh -huh. and i don't think people were very supportive at home about me going on a sunday oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we you know i thought maybe i'll do one or two levels uh -huh. and then i'll just practice on my own more uh -huh. and uh, every and things like that but then um, i did till raja yoga level the level 2 uh -huh. and the third level was guru and i was in uh, in for a guru at that time <laughs> and then i would probably need to go further but then you know daya ji called up also and uh, she said don't come for too many classes but you know just attend one and see how you like it because there were you know that was very early times and fortunately for me she was you know uh, more available also mm -hmm. so we had a chat and i said okay i'll come you know for the level 3 level 3 also <laughs> i don't think discipleship was did much for me at that time Mm -hmm. though what was happening is that uh, i used to when i used to meditate i used to think of sai baba another saint uh -huh. you know? mm -hmm. but then when i was thinking of sai baba somehow baba ji came very strongly mm -hmm. and then i'm like you know because i hadn't connected really to the path yet so it was a surprise for me and it wasn't like he came or you know like a real great vision or anything just a you know a feeling i thought i could you know feel it and then i said oh wait a minute what's happening here and then i think it just became you know like that and again with kriya i i just thought it's a pranayam you know another technique do i really need it <coughs> i might not be able to you know uh, really fulfill my vows maybe because like with the children in the house i can maximum do five days a week and i wasn't very sure but then as things would have it i did do kriya and then i think it was that kriya initiation that swami dhyana ji was giving us the initiation uh -huh. and um, keshava ji was there and daya ji was there and i had a really interesting experience with master at uh -huh. that time again i was like you know very skeptical and i'm like okay but let me you know a little bit go into this now that i'm here for the initiation and i quieted myself and then i really felt a strong presence Mm -hmm. and i think that's where i started realizing you know there is something which i'm missing here right so and, and so that. so we have we have where master is master is leading you according to your own nature i mean your nature wasn't devotional your your nature was intellectual so he kept feeding you interesting things to learn so that you would be you would move step by step and then <clears throat> baba ji coming in had you had a particular thought about baba ji before did it just he just came surprised to you 
it's like a surprise because you know i would tend to whatever i felt in meditation i would analyze that this is just your you know imagination and this and that but it was just i'm thinking of somebody else and somebody else coming mm-hmm. that made me think and stabilize in the car and that in the initiation when i felt it was something which i couldn't uh, you know and it has just come once <laughs> that that feeling and presence strong presence has come only once so i know as you said that they were just you know giving me glimpses just to make sure that i stay on the path <laughs> uh-huh. and then you found once you took kriya and had this experience of, of master's presence or babaji's presence in the kriya I, you know, I, that i don't know but it was a really really strong presence in the heart and mm-hmm. i was just crying and crying and crying i don't know what just happened suddenly you know so i don't know who it was it i'm guessing it was master <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was all of a sudden your the skepticism was replaced by an experience is that what you would say absolutely absolutely there was no way that i could doubt any more about uh, you know very good master and scenes being not in the body that itself was a difficult concept for me to digest uh-huh. so you know so it was very i mean it was something which i they just i probably wanted to give me something which i couldn't negate <laughs> which you couldn't negate <laughs> and what what year was that when you took kriya that was 2014 14 so now already 6 years ago so then so then you were able to keep your you've been able to keep up your kriya practice mostly since then yes definitely definitely so how has how has, how has your life become different since you since you took the initiation and took the kriya how is your life different now um i think very soon after practicing kriya um i think the um, underlying uh, there's a joy i i don't know it's a very strong word joy but um, just uh, happens slight uh, and a great sense of security that whatever happens uh, can happen but i have this underlying uh, peacefulness i wouldn't say in a very bad situation i'm not uh, you know disturbed but somehow it's always there that this is going to pass a real uh, sense of security and joy is inherent now mm-hmm. and very soon after kriya i think with a stable meditation practice you can get that and uh, definitely over a couple of years i was gradually more and more uh, you know master is just now you know i feel he's in my heart now but it was a gradual process you know for a year or so you you looked at his photograph suddenly you said felt a vibration again you doubt you know what are you imagining just on his birthday you're getting it is it possible and this that so then after a year or two of this i think uh, just became part of my life mm-hmm. and um, whatever i do it's um, now kind of he is part of uh, whatever i do that's very nice how has your family responded to these changes in you um family i i mean they just accept it uh-huh i wouldn't say they are overtly supportive but they are not negative uh-huh you know so it's just something that i do <laughs> you know it's like that <laughs> do they find you are do you feel that you're better able to fulfill your duties to your family with with this practice behind you uh i think uh, there are tests Mm-hmm. <laughs> so master has not put me in a position where i'm really really able to you know uh, do everything the right way right now but i think a lot of my karma i'm realizing things because i was introverted and to a certain extent maybe inhibited uh-huh. and that i think is uh, beginning to get resolved and i've become coming more into my own so when i'm coming more into my own there might be a little more you know mm-hmm. uh, Uh, more of uh, a definition of what i want to do sometimes mm-hmm. so uh the what has changed is that if i got angry 
then I would sulk for like 20 days earlier. <laughs> <laughs> now sometimes when I'm fighting with my husband <laughs> or anybody else in the family, sometimes in between I'm smiling with the, you know, it's ridiculous. What are we even fighting on? So that has changed, yes. Uh-huh. So I would say for the better, yeah. definitely. I'm sure I'm able to handle myself better, but there are challenges still for me, which I need to, you know, uh, which I feel is all an ongoing process of me realizing things and resolving them, I guess. Yeah, that's, very, <laughs> that's exactly right. Very, very good. It's not like we suddenly become saints, but, yeah. we, but we have a better idea of how to handle ourselves, which is yes. absolutely. Yeah. I'm better able to handle myself. I'm not sure about my family. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So uh, eventually, I understand you, you now help teach others is it through the yoga practice or did you take some kind of teacher training in all of this uh for uh, yes for Uh meditation we had meditation teacher training Uh at ananda Uh for a little while and then we i started doing the various levels Uh at the delhi center Uh and that's how it happened so so are you able to so you also not only practice but you also help instruct others at this time you help support others so what, what, are you, what are you able to do? What, what is your service then in that way? Um, as it, um, I teach the um, Om and Discipleship series, which is now Kriya Prep uh-huh. uh, Part 1, which is the Level 3. Uh-huh. And then I do, uh, sometimes take the Sunday service. Uh-huh. Very good. And also take a few classes uh, online now. Uh-huh. And otherwise at the center as well mm-hmm. and earlier I used to work with administration also with Dayaji but now that has stopped a little bit mm-hmm. I need to devote more time with the family with the children uh, needing a board uh, they have their you know certain classes that they have reached where they needed more help mm-hmm. so now administration I don't do but more teaching how do you how do you feel about the opportunity to share these teachings but how do you feel when you're able to do that? It's just amazing. I mean, you know, it's uh, when you're doing uh, day-to-day things sometimes, you know, you're not that desperate for master to flow through. But okay. when you're uh, standing in front of the Sunday service, you know, people in front of them and you have to suddenly give the satsang, then you definitely leave everything to master. <laughs> <laughs> so I think how strongly you feel him, uh, this has really helped me and definitely with the teachings because what they say, whatever, you know, you want to learn, if you share that, that is the best way to learn. And I think really it has deepened so much and um, I've started taking guided meditation in the evening once a week. And I think even it goes even deeper than my Kriya practice, you know, on my own. So just sharing has a different vibration to it. I mean, it just, uh, um, it's, it's just uh, takes me very deep in. Uh-huh. Do you have any particular experiences or times that you remember that stand out when you were, uh, when you were acting as a channel? Uh, this one particularly, but after every, uh, I think maybe before the class, there's a little nervousness. But after the class is over, then there's just bliss for that whole day. <laughs> it all happens pretty regularly. And especially with the meditation, I think it really, uh, I feel it's particularly, you just feel an amazing, peaceful and joyful vibration within. Uh-huh. Um, when you think of your life going forward as a disciple, what would be your ideal if, if, you, if, you, if you could have your life develop as a disciple, what would, what would the ideal look like to you? Um, as a disciple, for sure, mm-hmm. um, I would love to constantly be sharing and, you know, uh, moving forward like that and having a stronger Kriya practice. Uh-huh. I like to meditate long hours, so I sh- feel that, you know, uh, Somewhere in the future, before the lockdown, I managed to do that. But now with home, you're not able to get a very good meditation practice, a very long one. Uh So for me, it's essentially a lot of meditation and a lot of um, teaching and sharing I really enjoy doing. Uh And, you know, that book, 
that you've written of Swamiji. Mm -hmm. It's just so inspiring because every time I read it, it just energizes me that, you know, he just goes on serving whatever the problems, <laughs> he just goes on serving because he just wants to do it for master. And I can just imagine the bliss that if I could get that kind of energy going to serve on master and Swamiji's uh, life path, uh, I'd be like, that's what attracts me, the bliss that I would be in. <laughs> yes, right. yeah. So you, you came to Ananda after Swami Kriyananda had left his body, yes? So do you feel, is Swami Kriyananda real to you, even though you never met him personally? You know, in the beginning, uh, I think it was a journey also to get to know him really. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the beginning, it was, of course, knowing Master because everything of in the center was also oriented more as Swamiji himself wanted. Mm -hmm. But then um, I went once to um, take a class mm -hmm. uh, in Chandigarh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, just before the talk, I was remembering Master, mm -hmm. you know. And then suddenly I feel as though Swamiji is there, you know. <laughs> so I have these, I think, or, you know. So I was just like, uh, you know, I hadn't uh, before that really felt particularly uh, close to Swamiji. Mm -hmm. So, but that time and then gradually the experiences, I just started feeling his presence more and more. And uh, suddenly it just happened like that. You know, so I started reading his books also a lot more, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how I connected. And now it's, they're both equally like you know very important in my life. <laughs> the, the progress on the spiritual path is we just meet, we make more and more friends. You know, we yeah yeah. Um, that's what? what I'm realizing. Suddenly in meditation, I have so many people to think about. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you see Master's work developing in India? Do you, do you feel that it's timely for India? Do you think that there'll be a, a widespread, um, gradual widespread drawing to Master's teachings? What, how do you feel? I think it is. And, uh, you know, uh, with Zoom, mm -hmm. I realize, and with your book, this feeling of Dwapar age coming in is so strong in me right now that the age of energy is here because... Uh, with Zoom, we are reaching everywhere. I mean, uh, from the Delhi center, we didn't have so many online classes. Mm -hmm. And I myself wouldn't think of doing Zoom or online classes when I could just go to a center, maybe even half an hour away. Mm -hmm. Maybe I wouldn't go, but still I wouldn't think of, uh, you know, switching on my computer and doing the class online. But now everyone's used to it, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just something which doesn't feel... Uh, very different. I mean, I'm sure there is a difference, but it just feels that same energy, you know, you're so used to it right now that it just feels very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way Vapor Age is coming in. Mm -hmm. Zoom is coming in. Mm -hmm. We can reach so many centers, so many. Uh, we are also trying to develop the center in Chandigarh, which was already existing, but more and more energy there. So now it would have been somebody has to go to Chandigarh to take the classes. Now suddenly we are online doing satsangs, we are doing classes and everybody is enjoying that energy. It's not that it's, it's missing that we are not there in person or something. So I think it's just going to grow and this is the age of energy and yoga is the right, uh, you know, right mm -hmm. path for it where we need to understand our energy body. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we can see everyone's looking for a meditative path. They're not now looking for puja and rituals that much, mm -hmm. as much as meditation and spirituality. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something which everybody wants now. And if we can reach them, mm -hmm. then it master is the avatar for Dwapar. <laughs> that's, oh, that's wonderful. That's just so heartening to all of us because, of course, um, for those of us for whom this has really become home, it it's made our lives so much more beautiful that naturally we would like others to be able to enjoy that as well. So, Vasudha, it's been really lovely. I really appreciate your sharing so deeply and so sweetly. Thank, Thank you so much. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. And God bless you, dear. Thank you.